So, we will start our lecture on the Yoga Sutra. We will continue. Yesterday, we finished the first verse. That was Atha Yoganushasanam. Atha means now does Yoga Anushasanam starts the teachings of yoga. Now, generally, in the sutra format, the first few lines or the first few verses of the first chapter summarize the whole sutra. So, in the Yoga Sutra as well, the first four lines summarize the subject matter of the whole book. The first four lines of the verses as given to us by Maharishi Patanjali are Atha Yoga Anushasanam, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha, Tada Drushtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam, Vritti Sarupyam Itaratra. Out of these four verses, we have seen the first verse. We have understood the first verse. Now, the second verse we will try to understand in a very simple way. And if you remember all our lectures of the past and the subject matters that we have discussed from the point of view of Panchakosha or even the chakras, you will be able to understand this second verse easily. The second verse is Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. So, I will repeat it and you will repeat it after me. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Now let us try to understand what it is really trying to say. Yoga, so this is the definition of yoga according to Patanjali. Yesterday we saw one definition. Yoga Samadhi, remember? That was the definition according to Vyasa, who is the commentator. But what does Patanjali himself say about yoga? So this is Patanjali's understanding or definition of yoga. So, according to Patanjali, yoga chitta vritti chitta vritti nirodha. Now, we have to understand these three words essentially. Okay? Because each of these words, as you know by now, in the sutra format, nobody uses the words just because they have no other thing, other replacement. So, the, every word we need to understand properly. So, chitta, you have to understand the subject matter of chitta. So, do not read the book now. Just try to understand this. Hmm? Chitta is the whole dimension of your psyche or you could also call it the mental, emotional, mind.
So basically, Patanjali, when he mentions Chitta, he means the whole of the mind. And when we say whole of the mind, what does it mean? You could also call it the mental complex. So it means your state of awareness, the memories, so the memory stores, your subconscious, your unconscious, your conscious mind, So the whole mental complex according to Patanjali is the Chitta. This would also include your sense of I, sense of individuality, your identity. It would also include an aspect of mind that communicates with the senses. It would also include intellect, your power of reasoning. So all these things are given one common term denoted by a single term and that is Chitta. Is this clear? So basically what we understand nowadays as mind, okay. So let's come back to the definition, yoga, chitta, now we understood what is chitta, what is vritti, vritti means fluctuations. Fluctuations, waves, vritti literally means waves and just like neither of the two waves are ever equal, similar, same way the vrittis or the fluctuations of the mind too are not similar. What does this mean? This also indicates you could say disharmony, unevenness. So let's write some synonyms. Disharmony, unevenness, confusion, reactive I am just giving you synonyms of this idea that he is saying, vritti, fluctuation. So what are fluctuations? Fluctuations of the mind could be in the sense of mental disharmony, mental unevenness or emotional unevenness, mental confusion. Emotional reactiveness, you could also say laziness, all these things. Okay? And what means nirodha? Nirodha means to actually stop. Yoga, Chitta Vritti, Nirodaha. If the, if the word stop is, sounds too abrupt, you could also say, and some schools of thought also believe this, restrained. Restraint means to control, 
to control and then ultimately perhaps to stop. So, what is the definition of yoga according to Maharishi Patanjali? According to Maharishi Patanjali, the definition of yoga is psyche fluctuation restraint. That means stopping the fluctuations of the mind is yoga. What does your book say? How does your book translate this verse? The restraint of the modifications of the mind stuff is yoga. Restraints of the modifications of the mind stuff. Why does he say mind stuff, the commentator? He says mind stuff it means, the stuff means it includes many things like I told you. Your sense of ego or your past memories. Your desires, even your karmic, karmic impressions, all this. Like the other day, remember I explained to you the transmigration of the soul, how the true self, the being, leaves the body along with the mind complex. Patanjali is talking about this thing. So basically, in simple words, yoga is the fluctuation or yoga is the stoppage or restraint of mental fluctuations. This is the subject matter of Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. This itself tells us that Patanjali's Yoga Sutra deals with psyche or mind. It is not a manual of physical exercises. It is not an asana centric, asana focused manual. And this is how this Ashtanga Yoga is very very different than the Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga that is popular nowadays. So, according to Maharishi Patanjali, Yoga is the restraint or stoppage, stopping of mental fluctuations. Is this clear? The other day we discussed that how we all need to start becoming reflective and not reactive. So, we can also say that according to Patanjali, yoga is not being reactive. Because who reacts? Your mind. And your mind makes the body move in particular actions. And that becomes your physical reaction. Is this much clear? Simple definition. Yoga is the restraint of mental fluctuations. Why do the, why does the mind fluctuate? Mind fluctuates because we are still not controlling it. Mind fluctuates because mind does not know who is the boss. Mind feels it is the boss. Sometimes they give this example that the servant or the person who works as an employee at home, when the owner of the house is not there, behaves like as if he is the owner. 
he will use the tv he will use the refrigerator he will sleep on the master's bed but when the master comes home that employee will be put in his right place today the mind that is an employee of our true self behaves as if it is the master why does it behave like that because we are not courageous enough we are not clear enough we are not certain enough about ourselves imagine in the example that i gave you if the master of the house himself is not clear if he is a master or the servant it is such a confusing situation same way we have to understand who we really are when we realize our true nature we will be certain that the mind is nothing but an instrument given to us to realize our true self unless and until we understand this very very carefully and certainly that our true self whoever it is as of now we don't know much about it that our true self is the real master only then the mind can be reined in controlled managed made effective if this idea is not clear then the mind will take us for a ride the mind hijacks our present and a hijacked present will always create a insecure future we saw earlier some references to this in bible as well in the romans in the book of romans and the psalms we saw the same concept is mentioned our desperation about being tired of this mind these thoughts that are not in line right so basically patanjali says yoga is stopping or restrain of the mental fluctuations i am going to write a few terms here which are important terms in the yoga sutra we may not take those verses because of lack of time but i will mention those words anyway when you come to know who is the real boss when you come to know that hey my being my true self is the real boss and not the mind mind is my employee when this awareness dawns upon you it is called as vivek khyati vivek khyati khyati means in some simple terms you can say understanding 
or in english there's another word cognizance that's a proper word but a simple word is understanding and viveka means discriminative you see that discriminative means you know who's the boss you know hey my true self is the is the real being not my mind when you come to know that my true self as we saw it the love freedom and bliss is the real nature and not the mind and its fluctuations that time or that understanding is called viveka khyati or a discriminative understanding okay it's like in the example of the of the employee and the master of the house that we discussed when the master walks in the master knows he is the master that understanding of the master puts the employee in his place isn't it when the master the moment master walks in imagine one minute ago the master was not in the house so the employee was the master next moment door opens master walks in the moment the master walks in immediately relationship changes so when your true self shines in your awareness the mind is put to place that's the whole idea and this is basically our whole process our whole course is about this our whole course is about this tell us to remind us say hey 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 remember even though you feel that this mind that is talking to you is you even though you believe the self doubt is you even though you believe the self blame is you it is not you it is just a little corruption in your software it's like a computer in your computer when there's a virus the computer functioning becomes difficult suddenly it starts typing some strange characters whatever it wants or it becomes very slow or suddenly it will open some pages that you never requested suddenly it starts spamming your mail that time you know uh, 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 what's happening doesn't look like my normal computer functioning my normal computer my normal uh, hard drive would never do such a thing that is when you go on a virus cleaning mission but for that you need to know first how your mind should function if you start believing that ah, my no my computer normally if you type y it starts typing y y y y y y y y y go on and on and on if you feel that is the normal functioning of your computer then you would never know when it has virus when it doesn't have virus that is viveka khyati so right now even though we don't know what our true self is we agree with the past mystics or seers and believe them as hypotheses that our true self is nothing but love freedom and bliss they will call it as sachidananda as well or in this context basically purusha and when you know who the true self is at least theoretically if you agree you would know who the mind is or what the mind is 
like our last 11 12 days of hard work now you know your mind when you came here 12 13 days ago what you thought is you now after 13 days later you realize hey hey yeah i feel that is me but there is something more to me than that that is a true self that true self is self sufficient doesn't have to beg to anybody doesn't have to be needy there's no need for the true self to be insecure there's no need for the true self to be jealous it's just that the true self is coming in the sway of the mind and its habits or its tendencies and making the true self believe what it is not So, in this reference, we have the third verse. What is the third verse? Tada drishtu swarupe vasthanam. So, let's repeat. Tada drishtu swarupe Avasthanam Tada Drushtu Swarupe Avasthanam Tada Drushtu Swarupe Avasthanam Tada means then then t h e n so tada Drushtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam Tada means then Drushtu we see later Swarupe means In its own in its own whatever state nature color whatever you want to call it let's say in its own nature since we have used this word before avasthanam means state actually we can say avasthanam as nature or state and drushtu means the seer Seer doesn't mean the stage, uh, sage. A seer here means somebody, the person, the individual. Tada drushtu swarupe avasthanam. What does this mean? Now, let's look at both these verses together. Yoga is restraint of mental fluctuations. Then, the seer means the individual, the person, abides or resides, abides or resides in its own nature. Let 
okay what does it mean when you stop the hijacking of the mind you realize that you are something completely different than the mind wow going with what we have spoken before if you have started becoming reflective and not reactive you realize that wow i am something much much more much deeper much grander much lovelier much joyful than that reactive self this is the beauty this is the philosophical beauty of yoga sutra is this clear what does the third line say tada then drushtu seer swarupe avasthanam stays in his own true nature or state the reason i use the word nature because we are we are used to our the word true self or true nature and swarup means what swa the word swa means self which self bigger self so in its own true nature not false nature it's simple don't get lost in the words understand the concept patanjali says that the yoga that i am talking about is about stopping the fluctuations of the mind when a person can stop the mind fluctuations that is the time when that person can be who he or she really is and who is he or she really the true self and how do we define true self in our course love freedom and bliss love not out of neediness but love out of unconditionality freedom not out of oppression but boundless freedom and bliss not out of condition but unconditional bliss means unconditional happiness tada drushtuhu swarupe avasthanam clear in our course over the last 13 14 days have we realized the mental fluctuations do you know your mental fluctuations a little more then what you came with here our exercises our repetition of affirmations our reflections the different exercises that we do they have brought us close to understanding the fluctuations of our mind and our meditations our stillnesses our joys of togetherness and many many more beautiful simple things that we have experienced in our course have also brought us a little taste of something that is beyond all the drama of the mind when we went out when we did some purchases some of you bought some dresses and the joy on your face 
was something else. You were not self-critical. You were self-accepting. That time you sensed yourself that little, little swarupa, that little state in which you were in your own. You bought that dress because you liked it. Not because somebody said it looks good on you. Not because you could not decide. But because when you looked at the mirror, when you saw yourself, you said, yes, this looks nice on me. That is the certainty. The certainty. It's a certainty is an aspect of buddhi. Buddhi means uh, intellect, reasoning power, which is a part of the mind. Buddhi is defined as nishchayatmika buddhi, certainty, decisiveness. So you bought that dress that day with decisiveness. Yeah, I tried it on, it looks good on me and I bought it. That's it. Now nobody or whoever wants to say whatever, I don't care. But I saw myself in the mirror and I liked it. That certainty is an aspect of your true self. Or the closest aspect of your mind. That is closest to the true self, theoretically, from Sankhya, Sankhya philosophy. You have tasted that day when we went to see the sunrise, the stillness, the peace. Not because it came from somewhere, no. Because you just sat there and looking at the sun, looking at that morning reflected in this beautiful valley, it just made you so peaceful, calm and quiet. You forgot all your desires, you forgot all your mental drama, your reactiveness, your complaints, your blame, everything was forgotten at that time for that moment of stillness. And that moment of stillness is your true self. Now imagine... Just imagine, if that moment of stillness, if that moment of joy, if that moment of experiencing total unbridled freedom continues 24-7, 365 days a year, how would you feel? And what if I told you, hey, that is real you. Not this you who doubts, who complains, who blames, who lives in the past, who cannot forgive. And that is why Yoga Sutra is a scripture, a text of self-knowing. When you have the guts, the courage to ask yourself, Hey, who am I really? That is when your study of Yoga Sutra can start. Before that, you do something else. When you are hungry to find the answer to the question, is this really me? When you are thirsty to find out, how can I be still? That is when you approach the Yoga Sutra. Okay? Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha Tada Drushtuhu Swarupe Avasthanam And the fourth line basically is like a punchline. It summarizes the whole idea of the Yoga Sutra. Vritti Sarupya mitaratra. Vritti Sarupyam Itaratra. What does it mean? Let's repeat it three, four times just to get the pronunciations and to feel it. Vritti Sarupyam. Itaratra. 
वृत्ति सारूप्यम इतरत्र वृत्ति सारूप्यम इतरत्र सो वी हैव थ्री वर्ड्स हियर वृत्ति विच वी नो सारूप्यम इतरत्र लेट्स लुक एट व्हाट इट इज वृत्ति यू नो व्हाट इट इज नाउ द मेंटल फ्लक्चुएशंस यू कैन जस्ट से माइंड सारूप्यम मींस कन्फर्म्स Conform, conformity, or identifies. You could say identifies it also. Itaratra means elsewhere. You could you can mean it many ways. Elsewhere, whatever, anything. This can be interpreted in many ways. So, what does chapter four, one verse four says? Vritti sarupyam itaratra means when this doesn't happen. Please understand this; it's beautiful. When tadadrushtu swarupe avasthanam doesn't happen, vritti sarupyam itaratra. When the seer is not in his true self. the vritti or the mind basically identifies with anything <laughs> anything whatever you tell it it will believe itaratra you see itaratra means literally here and there so mind is here and there wherever it's it's the classic nature of our nature of confusion when in our day to day life when we cannot make our own opinion what happens we believe anybody if somebody can convince you of something you believe it why because you have no power of reasoning so whatever you say you believe it then then you say god wants you to kill you will believe it you don't question but why So now let's let's look at these three verses together. Huh? Just concentrate a little more. Yoga is restraint of mental fluctuations. When the mind fluctuations are restrained, the person or individual or the owner of the mind identifies or not even identifies. establishes in the true nature when that person doesn't establish in the true nature the mind is ready to associate with anything whatever like in hypnosis in hypnosis the hypnotist will tell the subject you are a monkey you are a monkey and take that subject to such a mental level that the person believes he is a monkey and then completely under control of the hypnotist and say eat the whole banana eat the banana jump jump climb the tree climb the tree that normal person would not even climb a tree doesn't know how to climb a tree but under hypnosis when the person is convinced that he is a monkey he will climb a tree like a monkey maybe he brings the past life memories forward and uses the skill but exactly that happens how does it happen in our life example poor me complex uh why does this always happen to me what have i done to the world why i never get my due and then the habit of staying in the poor me syndrome poor me thoughts poor me attitude will create your reality 
सो फर्गेट यूर ट्रू सेल्फ फर्गेट स्वरूप देन वॉट विल आपन द दृष्टू हू द सीयर विल बी इतर अत्र हिअर एन देअर सी इज लिटरली लाइक द हिप्नॉटिस्ट नाव द हिप्नॉटिस्ट इज सेलिंग यू यू आर नॉट अ मंकी यू आर एन एलिफेंट गो हिट युअर हेड अगेन्स्ट द ट्री एंड द पर्सन विल डू इट स्टॉप यू आर नॉट अ एलिफेंट यू आर अ फिश गो एंड स्विम स्विमिंग इतर अत्र फाइव मिनिट्स अगो दैट इंडिव्यूजल द दृष्ट हु वॉज अ मंकी नाव द हिप्नॉटिस्ट इन अवर कॉन्टेक्स्ट नाव हूज द हिप्नॉटिस्ट द माइंड the mind is telling the subject you are elephant and after 2 minutes the mind is telling the subject you are a fish no you were never a monkey you were always a fish would such a person under such hypnotism would ever know who that who he really is never this is why and this is how we go on and on and on and on passing through lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes of ignorance now imagine imagine when the hypnotist says you are a monkey that's your one lifetime then the hypnotist says you are an elephant that's another lifetime then the hypnotist says you are a fish that's a third lifetime the hypnotist can have billions of options for you isn't it billions modern research says there are more than 4.5 million species so that way the hypnotist will have 4.5 million options for you you are a virus you are a eagle you are a dog the subject has no control and if these first four lines of yoga sutra have not shaken you yet nothing will and this is why i love yoga sutra because patanjali the master that he is the seer the sage that he is the maharishi that he is only he can write a the whole our whole life history in three lines our state of existence in three lines it's look we all can identify with this we all can especially point number 4 verse number 4 is oh that sounds like me no that is me <laughs> yoga chitta vritti nirodha tada दृष्टु स्वरूपे अवस्थान वृत्ति सारूप्यम इतरत्र एंड देन ही डजन हैव टू से एनीथिंग देन पातंजलि डजन हैव टू से एनीथिंग ही इज कन्विंस्ड यू नाउ इमेजिन लाइक आई टोल्ड यू बिफोर दीज फोर वर्सेस आर द इंट्रोडक्शन टू द होल सूत्र सो यू रीड दीज फोर वर्सेस एंड यू आर कन्विंस्ड टू माई गॉड आई नीड टू रीड द होल बुक it sounds like my story like this so in four verses he has summarized the whole book and the whole book is basically nothing but methodology to bring you in swaroop this is a important word swaroop roop literally means form form f o r m roop Rupa means form, and swa means self. Swa means self, true, true form, real nature, true nature. So Patanjali Maharishi will say that I am presenting. अष्टांग योग 
or the process or techniques of eight limbs to bring you back to your true nature. Now, if you want to come back to the true nature according to these three verses, what do you have to work upon? The mind. That's it. And that is the scope of Yoga Sutra, Yoga in general and Yoga Sutra in specific. And let me tell you something, not just Raja Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga or Patanjali's Yoga, Cleansing of the mind is the basis of all yogas, whichever yoga you take, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, Hatha Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Laya Yoga, whichever yoga path you take, it has to go through the process of cleansing the mind. See, it's very simple. If you really, really look at it, it's very simple. There are only three things that we have. And that's why I told you that day that we are lucky that we live in three dimensions. If you were living like, like seven, eight dimensions with this ignorance, there will be lots to work upon. So, what do we have? We have this body, then we have the mind, and then we have this eternal consciousness. <laughs> that's it. So look, the body is temporary, it's not going to go anywhere. Next life also will have a body, may not be the same body, not at all the same body. So let's get rid of this body because it's a temporary vehicle. Eternal consciousness will always be there, will always be there. Now or 10,000 years later, it will always be there. So, what really needs to be worked upon? The mind. Look, there are three dimensions. The body, which is the physical structure. The mind, which is the processing unit and steady state of consciousness. God, Purusha, whatever you want to call it, steady, let's call it steady state. Is the body per, uh, permanent? So, why should we identify with the body if it is not going to be permanent? So, get rid of it. Means, do not focus on it more. Steady state, should we worry about it? No, because it is always going to be there. Beyond us also is going to be there. So, stop worrying about it. So, what should be our main point of focus? I will explain it to you in a simple way. <clears throat> Prasad wants to come from Bangalore to Kunur, this place. Prasad is Prasad, body. Is Prasad going to go somewhere? No, Prasad will always be there, here and there, whichever form. Is Kunur going to be go somewhere? No. Why? Because Kunur is a physically solid structure. 
It cannot go anywhere. Kunur cannot say, I am bored of these mountains, I will go somewhere now. No. So, what should Prasad worry about? That he catches the right bus. No. Same way. Body, always there. Or not be there. Mind, uh, uh, consciousness, always there, ever present. What can take me from the body to consciousness? Mind, the processing unit. And that's why Patanjali comes straight to the point. See, if given the chance, Patanjali could have written lines and lines and lines and lines about this subject. But since Patanjali stuck to the sutra format, he wanted to be clear, crisp and precise. Patanjali could have written 200 verses about how to maintain your body. Why not? Of course. He has gone through that process. Has to. Everybody has to. But he gave importance to mental transformation. And we need to keep that in mind. That Patanjala Yoga Sutra is a psychological manual. A manual of psychological transmutation. A manual of psychological transmutation and the main subject matter of Yoga Sutra is mental transformation. To transform the mind to such a state, to its purest state, that only one thing will be reflected. And that is the true self. Okay? One last example. Many times they will give this example. That mind is like a mirror. Mind is like a mirror. Now, if you go to your bathroom and stand in front of the mirror and the mirror has a lot of spots on it. Hmm? Above the basin, you go in the morning when you're half dazed anyway, half asleep, not yet fully awake. You go, you grab your toothbrush, you put your paste and the moment you look at yourself in the mirror, you realize that there's something red on your face. And then you start scratching your skin. And it's not going. It's not going. And then you scratch, you scratch, you scratch, you scratch. You scratch so much that you start bleeding. And then you realize, hey wait, what's happening? I'm scratching so much and still that mark is not going. And then you go closer, you go closer, you go closer. You go closer to the mirror and you realize that the spot that you thought is on your face is not on your face, it is on the mirror. So what will you do? You will still keep scratching yourself? No. That is when you will stop scratching yourself and start cleaning the mirror. This is exactly what we are doing. We have passed, we have finished with the process of scratching our face, thinking that the spot is on our own face. Now we have come to a point, because of our course or because life itself, that the spot is not on my face. The spot is on the mirror of my mind. And our process of cleansing the mind has started. And since when are these spots on our mind? Yesterday? Last one year? Since lifetimes. And these spots are called, our last word, new Sanskrit word for today, samskaras. Samskaras. 
samskaras. Samskaras, you can call them as uh, karmic debts, psycho spiritual conditionings, limitations. And that's why we have to remember and remind ourselves again and again that we have a lot of ground to cover. That our process has just started. And last but not the least, the only way out is through. You cannot circumvent you cannot take a detour on your path to true self. You cannot. You have to go through. You have to pass through. And that's why you need solid, unshaken trust. Lot of patience. huge dedication or discipline and last but not the least resilience the power to put up with any challenge because the only way out is through Okay, so we will end our lecture by summarizing these four verses. The first verse was Atha Yoganushasanam, means now starts the teaching of yoga. The teachings of yoga are for Adhikaris. Adhikaris are the students who have realized. the need of finding their freedom and are spiritually mature enough to claim the responsibility of their hard work on the spiritual path. The second verse, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodaha. So, Yoga is stopping or restraint of the mental fluctuations and how can these fluctuations come we will see later the third line is tadadrushtu swarupe avasthanam when the mental fluctuations are restrained taken care of then and only then that person that individual shines from his true self becomes the true self he doesn't uh, come under the hypnotic spell of the mind. He doesn't believe whatever the mind tells him. If the person doesn't shine from his true nature, true self, he identifies with anything that the fluctuations tell him. Like a Spell of a hypnotist telling the subject to behave this and that way whenever he wants. Okay?